Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Hope Pedraza. If that name sounds familiar, you're correct. She's been on the podcast before, episodes 307 and 308. Now, Hope is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. She's a certified holistic nutritionist, Reiki practitioner, human design guide, as well as the founder of In Balance, a Pilates-based fitness franchise. And she's also the host of the Hopeful and Wholesome podcast. Hope helps female entrepreneurs heal chronic symptoms, create balance and ease within the body using a combination of functional and energy medicine so that these entrepreneurs can live a life of joy, fulfillment, and impact. Now, in this episode of the Health Fix podcast, Hope and I are talking about quantum healing and how she's incorporating it into her retreats and work with clients. Now, you may be thinking, what's quantum healing or quantum medicine? Well, it's actually the art of healing your energy. Now, energy makes up every single part of you because after all, you are an energetic being full of more voltage than a lightning bolt. Doctors Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza are the pioneers in quantum medicine, so you might have heard of those guys, but there are a lot of folks like Hope Pedraza and myself spreading the word and bringing it to the masses that you can work on your energy. This is that concept of stuff getting stuck in the body, trauma, et cetera, stuck in the body. We're gonna talk about how you can access that and get rid of it today. So let's reintroduce you to Hope Pedraza. Hope, welcome back to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you, Denise. I'm so excited to be here again. Yeah, well, you know, I've been watching you on Instagram and like, soaking up all of your quantum information and seeing all the retreats and going like, we had to talk about this because before we hit record, I had told you that I'd surveyed my audience and and I said, what are you guys interested in? And I, I asked if folks were interested in quantum healing, quantum medicine, and about 75% folks that that surveyed um, said, I don't know what that is. So yeah. I'm like, great, perfect <laughs> opportunity. Perfect. Yeah. And I know hope can help me to explain it. <laughs> so Tell us, tell us how you got into quantum first. Well, let's, well, let's go first what it is and then tell us how you got into it. Yeah, yeah. So just when we're talking about quantum healing, we're talking about healing on every level. And that's really kind of what, how my, my nutrition practice has evolved where it's, you know, it started out just talking about nutrition, right? And it's just talking about you know, years and years ago when I first, I was just like basic nutrition coaching, right? So it was like calories and macros and healthy choices and, you know, the basics. Right. And then, you know, as I'm working with clients, I'm recognizing like, okay, these, these things are coming to me. They're talking about these, you know, they, they, they all came to me like, oh, I want to lose weight and I want it. But really when you get down to it, there's like hormonal things and thyroid things and all these other things going on. So I'm like, okay, there's more to this. There's more to the story here. So that was me realizing, okay, we need to look at the gut and the hormones and the thyroid and the adrenals and all these other pieces. Then as I'm working with clients and that capacity, and also just, I kind of, but my own journeys, I got to this realization where I'm like, okay, that's, that's great. Like there's all these physical things going on in the body, but I'm recognizing like, first there's this connection with stress in our environment that's causing physical things to happen in the body. Well, then there's this emotional piece that has an effect on how our physical body is functioning. And then through my own journey into human design, I realized there's this energetic piece, like there's the energetic body that is affecting how our physical body is functioning. And so putting all of these puzzle pieces together is how I got here to where we're talking about quantum healing is it's literally every level. It's the energetic, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. It's it's all the things. Mm-hmm. It, it sure is. And I think, you know, it's, it's something that you come to realize, right? After a mm. point, you're like, oh my gosh, where did we go from? Like, I just want to lose weight to like all the other things. Because totally. that's- that's how I see it in my practice too. And I never wanted to be a weight loss specialist and I'm not, you know, right. and, and I would get frustrated because I'm like, God, can we like really just weight loss? That's all you want for yourself. I know. <laughs> I know. Right. Right. Really? Exactly. Exactly. And that, those are conversations that, you know, I, I realized I was getting frustrated with, and I still have those conversations sometimes where I'm like, first of all, if that's, that's the only thing you want to work on. Then I'm not the practitioner for you. And second of all, 
like there's nothing inherently wrong with wanting to lose weight, but there's always a deeper why than just losing weight. So it's like, can we get to that deeper why? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where I see quantum coming in. Mm -hmm. So huge. And also like getting to the deeper why of like other chronic symptoms that may have contributed to why right. the weight loss yeah. is yeah. the thing. That exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you've been working with folks because now you have these retreats and, and I love it because explaining quantum is one thing and then being able to do it on a telehealth level is another Mm -hmm. But retreats seem to make so much more difference. I've heard so many people say over and over again, meeting up just gave me that extra movement mm, to, to yeah. move forward. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's really the, I didn't realize how much I wanted to do retreats until after I started doing them. Like I obviously I had the nudge or I wouldn't have started, you know, having that as a part of my business, but being in the energy of other people and just having that one-to-one face-to-face -face interaction. I know it sounds cliche, but like it really does make such a difference. And it makes such a difference in how you just being around other people's energy and just like the energy you're picking up and the the realizations and <clears throat> revelations you have about yourself. Like it just makes, it makes so much difference. And so, yeah, it is one thing to do this virtually because my, my practice is virtual and we do these quantum healing sessions virtually. But it's it really is like this next level piece when you're able to be in the energy of other people. And I, and I think, too, there's this piece of like there's a community piece, obviously, because you're there with other women. But I think I really think we underestimate just how much we thrive as humans. We thrive off being around other people and having this like like things to relate to with other people, right? And and again, I think on a conscious level, like we we see it, we're like, yeah, yeah, that's important. But there is like this deeper thing here. There's deeper piece at play when we are, we are designed to need other people and we are designed to have contact with other people. Like humans are not solitary creatures and we're designed to be solitary creatures. So this like, and, and, we, and we do see this like with the effects that we, during COVID and quarantine and all that, the effects that that had on people's mental, emotional health, like we see it. And I think it's time for us to recognize that. Like I love, trust me, I love the virtual world. Like I've built my business on the virtual world. It's awesome. But it's 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 just this next level of transformation, this next level of like relating and self-growth and personal growth, personal development what, that happens when you're in person in a container like a retreat where there's just so much space for you to grow and evolve and learn from each other. I agree. I agree. And I think there's like that collective energy mm, too, mm -hmm. to that builds because I've never been to a treat, a retreat where I've left and been like, wow, that sucked. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, totally. it's always something, right? I always pick up something and I always yep. feel like super, super good, um, on the collective energy. Honestly, you know, I, I did an email this morning because I was geeking out on lightning and realized that lightning can be like 300,000 volts. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but humans have, like 3.5 trillion if we multiply like the average amount of cells in our body. And I was like, but if we all get together. Yeah, right. It's so true. I mean, they've done studies about that. I don't know if you, if you look at, if you read Joe Dispenza's work, but Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot. And like, and there's, there's another guy, I'm trying to think of the other guy, another book I read, but it talks about like what happens when people like group meditations and they measure the energy of the room. And like, it really is a thing. And Joe Dispenza measures this stuff all the time in his big events. Like they're measuring the energy of the room and it's scientifically sh like proven. Like it, it really does change. It's, it's so cool. It's so yeah. cool. So, you know, it, it definitely leaves the space for where group, you know, work is is so important now of course i think a lot of folks might be thinking right now like hope okay so you mentioned what quantum is it's kind of everything and now you know Jeanine's kind of talking about energy and those kind of things explain to us a little bit how we take that bridge from like i just want to lose weight to mm -hmm. hey like how do you how do you talk to people like <laughs> hey I, I see you just want to lose weight but i also see you got some thyroid stuff you got some right. blood sugar stuff you got some nutrient deficiencies let's try to work on that with the, the, with what's going on, what we see, but also energetically, how do you bridge that right. gap for people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good question. 
And so the way that I do it, I kind of have, I kind of have a few pieces that fit there. So I incorporate human design and I don't know if I've talked about human design on your show before, yes. um, but okay. So I incorporate human design, right. And for those listening who are unfamiliar, human design is basically this, the intersection of these ancient teachings, like the chakra system and astrology and the I Ching and the Kabbalah tree of life put together with things like quantum physics and quantum mechanics and neuroscience and all this stuff. And it's, it's the energetic blueprint of your soul. And so for me, it starts there where I want people to have this basic understanding of like at a DNA level, like who are you, right? How does your energy function? How do you interact with the world around you? All of that kind of stuff. From there, we have a better idea of by looking at your human design chart, we have an idea of where certain patterns are going to show up in the body based on certain energy centers and where your energy is distributed on your chart and all that. So with that, that's where I like to start connecting the dots and connecting pieces, the puzzle pieces, because I can see like, for example, two of the most, I will say two of the most common for women coming to me are issues with the, the sacral center and the solar plexus. Our sacral center is associated with our reproductive organs. Mm -hmm. And so when we're out of alignment in the center, this is going to show up as, you know, reproductive things and things like endometriosis, PCOS, fertility issues, sexual dysfunction, like all these kind of things. Um, our solar plexus is our emotional center and it's associated with the various, some different uh, detox organs. And so it's affecting how your body's detoxing. I just did an Instagram live about this the other day, how it's affecting how your body's detoxing. So just two examples of how we can start connecting the physical body with the energetic body. And then we can dive in and look at, you know, on your human design chart, like what's the energy like in these centers? Like where are we out of alignment? What are some things we can do to kind of manage that? Like where are the challenges? Where are the strengths? So we can start to work with your own energy to help you on, on an energetic level that's in turn going to affect you on a physical level. Because I mean, the truth is all the root cause of all physical chronic ailments, it, it happens at an energetic level. It's at an emotional energetic level. So it's, you know, where is that like stagnation blockage in the button, the button, the energetic body, that's kind of halting that free flow of energy and the physical affecting the physical body. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's so valuable to take a moment and think about the fact that all of our chronic ailments have a root in the area that we have an energetic block. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, Chinese medicine, they teach us like acupuncture, put the needles where, you know, the yeah. block is or or put the points, you know, that are correlated with the block. Right. right. And and the crazy part is this is where you're going to laugh. We aren't taught in Chinese medicine the human design part of things, mm -hmm. the quantum part of things, the energetic like mm -hmm. you have the energy on a, it. It's a different concept. Different. Right. Right. And I don't know if they do that because they're trying to make it so Western that mm -hmm. that it, you lose it. And so like literally you're like, you know, I'm God, how many years out? 17 plus years out right now from, from school. Right. And you, you're at that point where you're like, did I miss like, did I miss that day? Right. Did I miss right. that week? Like, <laughs> right. Why am I just figuring it out now? Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's it is. It's a big piece. I mean, and it's I really do think that the it it's one of the big pieces that we're missing in the whole like wellness equation we're talking about like we're talking about quantum healing right it's it's right. healing on every level i mean it is putting these pieces together with the physical and energetic body and you can think it's woo all day long but when you really look at i mean if you're in there there is science to back a lot of this up now there's not a lot of science to back up human design but we're looking together of uh, the concepts like the basic concepts of human design and energy and how energy works then it does make sense and, and there's, you know, there's scientific stuff to back up some of it, like neutrinos and these subatomic particles, like there's some science around that. But I mean, you look at traditional Chinese medicine teaches, right? The balance of yin and yang in the body starts with the endocrine system. Like it, it starts with your hormones. And that that's really what we're looking at. We're looking at these energy centers in the body. It's like, how are these, the energy in these centers affecting your hormones? How is the emotions, the energy that's happening in these centers affecting your hormones? It's all affecting your physical body. Ah. Uh. And, and, and here's the thing, you know, even though there's not a lot of research with human design, we have a lot of research with the chakras totally. and that lines up, you totally. know, absolutely perfectly there. And, and even I would say at this point in the stage of my, my, let's say practice or whatever you want to call it at this point, it's, it seems like we've forgotten 
a lot of the ancient mm -hmm. teachings and went mm -hmm. after shiny objects and one pills and, and quick solutions sure. when ancient medicine showing us like, Hey, this is the path. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, yeah. No, that's it. I mean, I totally agree. And I, I think that's why like the, the work, this whole like connecting the dots and putting the puzzle together is so intriguing to me. Cause it's like this, I mean, it really is at the intersection of like East meets West, right? It's like, okay, we can look at what's going on in the physical body and, you know, we can do the labs and look at your adrenals and, you know, all the things, but then, yeah, it's like, yeah, these traditional methods are teaching us like our energy is affecting everything, our emotions, our energy is affecting everything. So it really is just putting that together. It's, it's fun being a puzzle. Putting yeah, the puzzles together, right? I love like the puzzles. <laughs> it's I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy it so yeah. much more, you know, and, and down that line with the puzzles and, and kind of putting things together. Have you started to realize at, or, or notice as you're putting puzzles together that you can help like literally trace stuff back with folks and help them really unravel when things started to oh, happen, yeah. give them a little insight? Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's all the more of the fun part too, right? So I use techniques like, you know, we'll do things like NLP or hypnosis and emotional release. And so we'll do all these things, you know, looking at like timeline travel type things, right. To, to, to kind of figure out where are things. And that's really, that's really the fun part too, because we can think back because a lot of times my clients will think back like, oh, like this is the part, this is the point where the symptoms kind of started and sometimes they're like, well, you know, it didn't really seem like that big of a traumatic, you know, meet your quotes, traumatic thing, whatever. And, but, but then, but then when we get into the sessions, I call them quantum healing sessions, we get into the sessions, it's usually something totally different that, that wasn't even on their conscious yeah. level. That was the thing that caused it all to happen. I had a client a couple weeks ago. It was literally this event that happened to her 20 years ago. It was not even on, like, we hadn't even talked about any, it's this thing that just came up in our session and you know, she's crying and she got up. She's like, I had no, like, I had no idea that was about to happen. Like, it's just so, so it, it really is an understanding, like, and for her, it was like this shame and fear of abandonment and all these emotions coming up that were contributing to a lot of what was going on in her body. So, so yeah, I think it is just, it surprised you. It, it's, it's, it's an interesting piece, how much your subconscious mind, like, how much is back there, right? Just when we, when we allow ourselves this space to feel safe, to let it out, then it's like, oh, here's all these things that have been hiding and causing this like low key, like chaos in the body. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people think of like, okay, so yes, our, our subconscious mind is, is holding all these things. And, and the, the concept of feeling safe, right? Mm -hmm. This is, this is a big one that I've been talking about sometimes in podcasts, but also with a lot of my patients and, and I get the eyebrow, like, mm -hmm. like, you know, everyone's like, I am safe. I've got a right. roof over my head. Yes. You know, like, I, I don't yes. understand. And right. it's like, I'm not saying that you're not safe right at the moment, mm -hmm. but does your brain know that? So mm -hmm. in your quantum sessions, like get, let's, let's go through like a, a session. Like what, mm -hmm. what are people doing in the session? How are you getting to the point where you can help them facilitate either a release or awareness mm -hmm. or something of that nature? Yeah. Like how, yeah. do you, how do you pull the things out of the subconscious yeah, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. help them to realize it's, it's connected to feeling it's, safe? Right, right. Hey, health junkies, if your feet aren't happy and healthy, the rest of you could suffer from low back pain all the way up to neck pain. And yes, even gut issues can be related to your feet because your feet are connected to your nervous system. Happy feet equal one less thing the nervous system has to worry about. I want to tell you about Paluva. This is a new zero drop minimalist shoe with a distinctive five toe design. Paluvas give you the most authentic barefoot style experience, but with sufficient cushioning to use in everyday movement, fitness, and athletic activities. Paluvas are super stylish, so you also get a barefoot shoe that looks good too. Paluvas are a step ahead of every other zero drop wide box shoe because they feature separate slots for each of your five toes. So if you've been using toe separators, you can ditch them and just wear the paluvas. Those individual slots for each toe allow for correct dynamic movement of the foot through the walking or running stride, which is important when toes are encased in a single box, even a wide box. Now, 
Minimalist shoes have faced controversy in recent years about causing injuries from inappropriate use. So you want to get walking in Paluvas, living in Paluvas, and doing whatever you can while you're going barefoot in your home and safe areas as much as possible. So go ahead and use your specialized running shoes, basketball shoes, work boots, high heels when you need to, but wear Paluvas as much as possible to reawaken the natural functionality of the human foot to stand, walk, run, and perform. Try a pair of Paluvas with no risk and you'll quickly realize that these are the most comfortable shoes you've ever worn. They're designed to feel like you're walking barefoot on clouds. So visit Paluva, P-E-L-U-V-A dot com and take 15% off with the code HEALTHFIX. Let's get back to the podcast. So the first thing before I do sessions, I always have a good idea or I, you know, I kind of study their chart and kind of a lot of times I kind of move intuitively through their chart too. And I like pick out things that I feel like would be important to kind of bring into the session. Um, Gene Keys is another thing I bring in. Gene Keys is, that's a conversation for another day, but it's kind of like the cousin to human design. So similar concept, but a little, little bit different nuances. So bringing these pieces in where I have an idea of their energetic makeup, like going into this session where I feel like patterns and stuff could be hiding. And then in the sessions, it's, it's, and that's the thing and you, and you, you hit the nail on the head. It's like, okay, our, our, you know, we can think in our head, we feel safe, but our body doesn't always feel safe to feel the things that need to be felt to be able to release the things that need to be released. Like you've heard the adage, like feel it to heal it. Our body has to feel safe, enable in order for us to feel it, to heal it. And that's really all it is. Like we're looking at, you know, how do we release emotions and trauma and all that? It's just feeling it. It's it's bringing attention to it because the the problem is we're, we're kind of the, like the, the break in the chain is when we have an emotional event, whether it's big T, little T trauma, that's the first thing I want to say. Your body doesn't know the difference. Big T, little T trauma doesn't matter to the body. It's just, it's just trauma to the body. And when we feel that it's basically us halting that emotional process where physiologically there's a process that happens with neurotransmitters and hormones and all these things when you're having an emotional reaction and our body wants to complete that. But when it's traumatic, where it's it's too much of a shock to the body, we halt that process and then it just gets stuck in the body, right? That's what gets stuck in the energetic body. So when we're going into these sessions, we're just figuring out where those things have gotten stuck. And when we bring ourselves into, so I use, you know, kind of hypnotic language and we kind of use hypnosis and to get them into a safe space and kind of really tuning into their intuition or inner voice or inner, like whatever you want to call it to kind of calm down the body. We bring ourselves into this safe space and they feel safe to feel that's when things start to come up. And really it's just us communicating with the subconscious mind. That's what the session's about. It's us communicating with the subconscious mind and asking the subconscious mind, like, hey, what's here that you're ready to let go of? And the thing is, I know sometimes people get freaked out when you hear about hypnosis, like, what if these crazy things come up? And then I'm, you know, I'm traumatized all over again. Your your subconscious mind is never going to release things it's not ready to release. Like, it's never going to, if something is coming up, it's ready to be released. And so it's just us taking the space. And I think that's the big thing is for a lot of people, it's, you know, we've, we're avoiding feeling the things, right? And and it's just, it really is as simple. I know it sounds just like I'm oversimplifying it, but it really is as simple as just taking the space. And so these sessions, a lot of times with clients, this is the first time that they've maybe in a long time that they've like sat still and listened and tuned into their subconscious mind because it's been trying to tell you things, but we're too busy or we shut it off or we repress it. Right. So it's just, again, just having that conversation with the subconscious mind and it's going to tell you what's ready to be released. It's, you're going to, it's, it's about tuning into the body. That's the other piece. That's the, that's a crucial piece. It's getting out of the head and into the body, which is a hard, is a hard thing for people. And I, I think especially in the Western world, we, we're in such a mental we live in such a mental society. Everything is mental. Everything is analytical. Everything is real heady. And we become so disconnected from our body, which is why we carry so much in our bodies that's affecting our physical health, right? So if we can shut the mind off, like quiet the mind, when we go into the subconscious, that's when we can feel into the body. And that's where like your subconscious mind will kind of direct you. And that's what we go through in the sessions. Like we're finding literally where in your physical body are we holding on to this? And I'll tell you a quick story. I had a client um, the end of last year, we had a session together 
And she was very specific because I'm usually asking them and we're asking the subconscious mind, like where in the body do you feel, you know, tightness, pressure, ache, pain, you know, whatever the feeling is. And she very specifically said her left ovary, very specifically said my left ovary. That's where I feel it. So we kind of go through it and we're, you know, identifying it. Let's give it a shape. What does it look like? And she's saying, you know, look, it's, it's a nail, like it's a big, sharp nail. That's what it looks like. And so we sit with it. We kind of work through things. And what came up for her was shame. That was the emotion that was attached to this thing that we've identified in her body. And so, you know, she's kind of crying through it. We're releasing it, we're working through it. I'm not kidding when I tell you two days later, she sends me a text and says she's in the hospital because she had a cyst rupture. And I can give you one guess where it was in her left <laughs> ovary. I'm like, girlfriend, when I say we release something like your body was like, Wah! so like this stuff really works. And it, it literally gets stored in your physical body. We just have to talk to the subconscious mind to uncover where it is and allow that part. Like it, all it needed was her attention. Like we just needed to go there and feel it. And then we released it. That's crazy. And it's crazy. And like she ended up, I mean, unfortunately, she ended up in in the the ER getting checked out. <laughs> right. But like, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's it. Like, that's it. Yeah. And that's what know? I told her. I was like, I am so sorry in pain, but oh my gosh, this is like the biggest gift ever. You just released something major. So yeah. And how is she doing now? Now that she's out of yeah, that, she yeah, ever had the she's pain? good. She, she had a couple more cysts after that. And then now she's like on her healing way. She's like feeling better in her body than ever. She like made huge strides in her business. I mean, it was just like, yeah, it was just like part of the path of things that needed to be let go of. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Not cool that she had to go to the ER, but yeah, hey, right. you know what? I mean, so I, I've had different situations in that case with patients mm -hmm. where, where things of like that nature have mm -hmm. happened or like mm -hmm. a bladder infection mm -hmm. just like raged. Yep. And then, you know, you're like, yikes, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> so sorry, not sorry. Um, right, right. Because now now it's going to be a lot better. Right. And and of course, yeah. that's the hard part of of trying to explain the, the weirdness of the body. Yes. But, yes. but um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Now, in in your own experience i'm mm -hmm. curious like because when we had first talked we were talking human design of course you were you know working through energetics and and of course i see you doing pilates a lot mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is your thing yes and pilates i in in the times i've done pilates which i if i had a reformer i think i would do it a lot mm -hmm. more the not reformer pilates i don't know i just i can't feel yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah and i yeah, and yeah. i know you have the reformer so Yes. When you're working with folks in Pilates and doing a little bit more of motion body work kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and where I'm going with this is because a lot of folks that I know that listen to this podcast are trainers, fitness mm -hmm. folks. Mm -hmm. And I love to try to get that like what you feel when you move in mm. different directions can mm -hmm. give you a lot of clues too. So totally. in your experience with going, you know, working with folks or even in yourself with, with Pilates and, and working on the reformer, have you found that some of the restrictions that people have or pain that people have translate as well to some stuff subconscious when you kind yeah. of- Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a whole world of, you know, trauma-informed movement and on this, you know, topic about how the body does, you know, certain- parts of the body holding tension and certain, certain parts of the body that, you know, don't want to be touched in certain parts. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's a huge piece of it. And I, I definitely see, um, clients that come in and, you know, it's more along more when you have private sessions, cause you have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, time to look at them and have conversations about it, but there's definitely a crossover in the things going on, like tension, tightness, um, like restricted ranges of motion in certain areas of the body and things they've experienced in life, right? And and learning about things they've experienced in life and how that's affecting how their physical body is working. So yeah, I think there's a total crossover. And and, and again, I mean, I think it, you know, it goes back to even to whether you're talking about the organs and the glands, or you're talking about the muscles and the bones, like, and that's, I think the big thing too, there is, um, I had a gal on my podcast, we talked about this uh, last week, I think, or the week before talking about the fascia and how much the fascia, how much energy and emotion that kind of stuff, the fascia holds, it's this, you know, web in the body and that's, that's around the whole body. So I, I think there's a lot to that. And, and, and when your fascia, there's, you know, 
buildup of scar tissue, whatever it's that's restricting your range of motion. So I think there's definitely something there and and how movement, um, uh, like looking at how like patterns of movement, um, like gait, all that kind of stuff and how that's related to what's being stored in the body for sure. I like, think I got into the, I ended up where I am now. Let's put it that way by, by starting with looking at the body and noticing all the restrictions mm -hmm. and, and watching people walk and going, huh, I wonder mm -hmm. why that's happening. Yeah. You know, and being like, yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And, and so in your experience, have you seen like, say someone comes in, they've got like a different kind of gait. Maybe their, their one foot goes out a little bit more, or maybe their one foot goes in a little bit more and they didn't mm -hmm. have an injury. Have you kind of looked at their human design and been like, oh, there's a sacral thing there? Or like, is is there an, are there any patterns? I guess what I'm going for is patterns. I love patterns and seeing patterns. Is there anything you could share with folks who are listening that might be like, hmm, this is interesting, but I'm not sure if it fits for me. So yeah. Let's, let's talk about patterns in particular in women, if you've seen any perimenopausal, 30 plus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any patterns you've seen that maybe might resonate with someone. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't typically look at my clients in my studio, look at their human design um, typically. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't know right off the bat, but I can definitely say just for the clients I work with who, where I do do their human design, there's definitely patterns in just hearing them talk about like what feels good to them as far as movement, what doesn't feel good to them as far as movement, what feels more like intuitive with them with movement um, that definitely shows up and there's definitely patterns. I think that the biggest patterns I, I'm with you, I'm all about the patterns, the biggest patterns for me really start with, and I, and I do think that there is something to be said, and I should probably do like a study in my studio for this. Now that you're like, in, <laughs> like putting ideas in my head now, I'm like, I should do a study of this because there's a lot of people with things like women with, you know, pelvic floor dysfunction and that kind of stuff. And that's, there's a, and you know, that's affecting how their body is moving and how they're able to move and those kind of things. And it's hundred percent related to certain things in the body with, you know, the sickle center, the root center, like those things. So I could see there being some serious patterns with those. And I think the, the, I mentioned before the sacral center and the solar plexus, but I yeah. really think for women, the root center, the sacral and the solar plexus are probably the, the top three where I see patterns over and over and over and over again, showing up in the physical body. And I will also say the throat center. Um, I feel like those are the ones that show up the most often in women. And I, I can a hundred percent say that it would be affecting how their body is physically moving through life, that kind of thing, just from what's going on in those particular energy centers. Gotcha. Well, it makes sense. I mean, gosh, I don't know how many, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's my business and being the naturopath that maybe it's because they're drawn to me to thyroid stuff for sure. Yes. Yes. Chest stuff like solar plexus. I see a mm -hmm. lot of breathing dysfunction, mm -hmm. grief mm -hmm. um, held in there too. And like lots now, I don't know if it's since COVID. It seems like it. So many people like lung stuff over mm -hmm. and over and over again. We can't mm -hmm. seem to get, get it out of there. Oh my yes. goodness. And then the yes. sacral, like sacral root chakra. I mean, this for women, this is, the, you know, ladies who are listening, you know, low back pain, sciatica, mm -hmm. all the stuff. Yep. I, I know since we've talked, I probably didn't tell you, and, and this would be interesting to see your take on this. I found out cause I was having some really bad sciatica and I, I overdid it with some deadlifting. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for history of that. And then I was carrying shingles up on my roof and doing, you know, just goofy stuff. Right. But, um, I ended up with the L5 S1 disc herniation like completely oh, wow. blown out and and the doc's like yeah you know really the only solution is surgery but if you can mm. you know avoid that and and strengthen things you know it, it would be better and, and I couldn't help but think to myself there's got to be something energetic here there's mm. got to be something mm -hmm. and so yeah yeah I mean I think I think what you said before I think the root sacral is like 100 percent connected with that part of the body and I think there's Definitely something to look at there with those two centers related there. Well, and I think, you know, the root center, I know I mentioned before they say, so I'll say both of these. So your root center is associated with right safety and security and all that surrounds that. Your That's your root center. Your sacral center is creativity and sexuality. And it's like your life force energy. And it's, it's like where desire comes from in the sacral center. So I think there's a lot to that. And 
again, especially with women and I have this, I have, well, I have a handful of theories around things mm-hmm. happening in the, in these centers, but I feel like there's something to be said with women just thinking about the sacral center. And there's so many women with low back pain. Like there's so many women with low back pain. Right. And I feel like there's something to this and looking at as the sacral at the sacral center as the source of, you know, life force, creativity, desire, or how many of us as women, like push aside and kind of suppress what we really desire, right? Like how many of us just do, we, you know, we're the good girl. We do what we think we should be doing, or we follow, you know, society or whatever, or whatever traditional roles we think we should be playing rather than living out our true desires. Like how much dysfunction is related to that of us just suppressing and pushing aside what we really desire to do in life. And, you know, how much of that is affecting our physical body in terms of low back pain and all the other things? I mean, come on. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. I can tell 100% when I'm doing what I want to do, like podcasting and doing that stuff, my back doesn't hurt. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. Right, right. Totally. It's so funny. I I was looking really quick while you're chatting to see if I could find my human design chart, but I can't um, at the moment. But folks, we went through it before on a previous podcast. So I'll link to that if you guys are curious and like trying to figure out like what what is this about? But God, the low back pain, the pelvic floor dysfunction, urinary Mm -hmm. incontinence. I mean, so, so common, so common. And, And I want women to just really hear this. Like, guys, it's common. There are solutions. Yeah. You've heard yeah. that now. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. There are solutions. You don't have to, you don't have to live with it. So speaking of that, let's dive into your retreats a little bit, because of course I saw you were doing that. And that was my whole point for was like, Hey, hope let's talk about this because like we said at the beginning of the podcast, that's collective energy really does help. And I see so many people come back from retreats and be like, just fired up and like mm-hmm. just feeling so much better. So tell us a little bit about how you got into the t- retreats and mm-hmm. like what like do you do you s- like screen people before you pick who's going to go together? Mm-hmm. Do you work with people before before they can go to a retreat? Like what what's the scoop? Give us how it works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um my retreats I do keep them small and exclusive at least for now that's how I want to do it just for for community's sake. And I, I want to be able to have, you know, the right group of people together and have, so, so the one I did, um, a little over a month ago was, it was small, it was intimate, it was exclusive. And I wanted that because I wanted to have time to do one-on-one sessions with everybody while we were on retreat. And so I have, you know, I have themes for all of them. And the, the, the theme for that one was really just all about human design and I had people came who were, you know, a little bit familiar with human design. I had people who had no idea, like they didn't, but were interested in learning at least, you know. And so it was nice to have people kind of across the spectrum. And we were able to really spend the time one-on-one to talk about different aspects of their chart. And we had a session where we talked about, because I told them before I left, um, and that's the thing, reason I like to keep it small. Like I, you know, I set up kind of a group chat. So we're kind of chatting before we leave and we're talking about things and, you know, I'm getting input from them. Like, what are the big things you want to learn while we're on this retreat? Obviously I have my curriculum, what I want to do, but like, you know, what do you want to get out of it? So we're able to really like curate this experience based on where everybody is in life and kind of where they are in their journey and what they want to gain from the, the, the uh, experience. And so like one of the sessions was we went through their partners and spouses and kids human design, be able to understand their families better. And that was just like this mind blowing thing for so many of them. Like I'm one of my members saying like, I have so much more like tenderness for my husband where these things like were driving me bonkers. I'm like, oh, like, so it was just these conversations where we're able to understand each other better and our partners and our families better. And so the whole, the whole point of the experience is to have just this immersive experience in these modalities that, that I teach that are all, you know, a lot of somatic practices and human design and, um, uh, energy work, like all of these things, putting it together in a one-on-one setting. Cause that's the other thing too. Like we did a lot of somatic work. We did a lot of energetic work. We did some um, like inner child stuff as a group there at sessions. We did um, some somatic work where we were releasing, um, had like some energy or emotional release sessions together. And, and, and we, they, the women there created such 
a bond and they didn't know each other. Like, you know, one of them brought a friend, but like they didn't all know each other, but we were able to, like, they felt comfortable openly sharing, you know, what came up for them in these sessions. And it really does just like you're talking about that collective energy. I think that's the other piece is it's like, you go through these like energetic experiences with each other and you're able to like share in the feelings and the things that come up. And it's just, it's just a different experience knowing like, I'm not alone in feeling these things, right? I think that's a big piece of it. And and also learning from other people's experiences and being able to, you know, learn from the things they've been through. And that's kind of another piece of the retreat is keeping it small. We're learning from each other and we're feeling out each other's energy and we're doing it all in this like safe container where we have room for our own growth and evolution. Mm. It's It's so huge to be able to share I think mm -hmm. a lot of us, you know, let's put it this way. When people are too close to you, right? Like you're really good friends, your mom, you're, you know, really like neighbors, whatever it may be. It's hard because mm -hmm. you, you feel like, mm, I can't be, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but when you can yeah. go to a retreat, I feel like it's, it's a different space. Right. And, and yeah. especially if it is meant specifically for holding space of this kind of right. for a lot of women, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think the interesting thing about it is, and, and I, I wanted to make sure like in how I was marketing your retreat, I said this because for me, I'm an introvert. Like, honestly, I'd rather be by myself than with people any day of the week. Like I like being alone and I, you know, being around a lot of people is exhausting for me. So I, and I'm not the one to just like openly share things with people I don't know. And so I know like, like listening to this, people are like, I don't want to share my innermost things coming up with random people. And you, you go into these experiences thinking like that, but when you're in the moment and you're experiencing these things together, like something just shifts and the openness and the vulnerability just like seeps out of you without even like, without even trying to. And so I, I want to say that too, for people listening who are like, that sounds awful. Like, I don't want to share these things with people. It's, it, it just puts, you are in such a different mindset in these scenarios and you're in such a different energy. It really is the energy. I mean, I don't keep saying energy, but it really is the energy of the group that allows this openness and vulnerability. Because again, like I said before, I really believe as humans, like we're, we're meant to be open and honest and vulnerable with each other. And I think this is like, very contrary to Western society, Western world, who is still not really acknowledging that we as humans have emotions that are meant to be felt like, right. It's, I think that it's, it's a definitely a mindset shift from just society and conditioning and all that to openly share these kind of things with each other. But I really do think that's what we're meant. That's what we're here for. I think we're here to help each other with these things and, and be able to be, a vessel to carry, help other people carry their stuff. Like, I, I just think that we're all here to do it together. And this is the space to be able to do that. That is well said. That is well said. Um, gosh, you know, I do think that women in particular, because I can't speak for male energy, because uh, I mean, yes, I have some of that, but I'm not a male. Mm -hmm. um, but the point is, is I, I think women for generations, I mean, if we look, at ancient history and we look at different you know whether it's pictographs or whether it is old like writings and whatnot there's always like a women's circle mm. or a women's group mm -hmm. and it seems like even if I went back to like my mom's group right at church back in 1980 whatever right like mm -hmm. they just hung out and chatted and you know mm -hmm. it wasn't all about you know religion it was just everyone kind of supported each other yeah and and I think we lost a lot of that yeah. with, with yeah. the pandemic, which yeah. kills me. Mm -hmm. Yep. A hundred percent. I, I agree. And I, I think so many women are struggling and suffering in silence from various things like, you know, chronic disease, chronic illness, but also again, just that like emotional energetic stuff because of that and, and not feeling like they have the safe space to open up and share and, you know, bear their soul. And, you know, it's, right. it is. And it especially like, I had this conversation with my husband the other day and I have it often when you're in the entrepreneur world too, like being entrepreneurs can be really lonely. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I say that because he 
sometimes thinks like, why are you paying to be with this group of people to talk about stuff? Like, right. I'm like, you have no idea. Like it is really lonely here, especially when you're a solopreneur and you, you know, you don't have a big team and you're not, you know, so it's, it, I think we have lost a lot of that. And I, I think it's important for us to be able to intentionally create this space for us to have those, you know, using air quotes, women's circles, whatever that looks like for you. It doesn't have to be like a formal women's circle, but to have those groups to be able to do that and share and just be in each other's energy and, and help lift each other up. Hmm. Well, well said. I, I mean, I think that's kind of why I somewhat do the podcast too, because I get to have lovely yeah. folks like you come on yes. and, <laughs> and we chat and hopefully, you know, in, in the audio of folks listening to this, they feel like they're part of the crew too. And, yeah. and that's, that's ultimately what I'd like to do because yeah. I, just it pains me to hear you know like what you, you're describing you know it pains me to hear women talk about not having their crew right mm -hmm. or not being able to find their crew and yes mm -hmm. entrepreneurs it is sometimes lonely mm -hmm. you know, I agree I mm -hmm. agree and even if we are introverts because I think a lot of people will say yeah. you know if I'm an introvert I, I'm I'd rather be alone in a home right but still we still have we still need, that's it that's it exactly exactly and I have come to realize that too I think that's been a big learning big learning thing for me over the past probably five or six years especially during COVID because for me at first COVID was like this is a dream I don't have to see people I don't be around people like I had my second baby and nobody came to the hospital like this is awesome but then you get to the point where you're like oh okay now I see like I do see that like we do need people. It's just, you know, there's different like limitations and boundaries, I think with introverts, but it, we still need people. Like we're still not meant to be by ourselves all the time. So yeah. Yeah. We still need our crew. That's it, man. Well, I am glad that you are contributing to helping folks find their crew and giving folks Thank the you. outlet to be able to explore themselves on such a profound level, life-changing really. And, and I'm excited for folks to hear more about your retreats as they come up. So let's tell folks about where they can find you, where they can get more information on when retreats are coming up and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you can follow me um, at the Hope Pedraza. And then I also have an Instagram page just for my retreats. It's Hopeful and Wholesome Retreats. And then you can check out my website, hopefulandwholesome.com slash retreats. And you have a podcast. I do. I have a podcast. It's called Hopeful and Wholesome as well. So Hopeful and Wholesome all around. You can find all the things. <laughs> you guys can, I mean, oh, good stuff. And that's, of course, where I Instagram, of course, and then her podcast is fabulous. Guys, she's got a lot of great information and very similar message as me, um, but different information. So yeah. I encourage you guys to check it out. So Hope, thank you so much for coming on. I can't appreciate it. I mean, I can't even express how much I appreciate you coming back on. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate the, the invite again. Oh, I'm sure we'll talk more in the future. <laughs> hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>